Good evening, everyone. What a great joy to see all of you once again. And welcome to the Celebrity Club. And we are talking about some of the hero of faith, people in different walks of life, and they have been successful, and they have been known to many people. And tonight, we have the privilege to talk together and study and learn from uh, one of the women of God, very powerful woman of God called Apostle Brooke Crawford. And she's going to share with us a wonderful story about her life, her ministry, about the call that God has given to her, and uh, in some way that you and I will be blessed in many ways, and you and I will receive the abundant blessing of the Lord from the teaching of God's servant tonight. So welcome to the show and welcome to the Vision TV tonight. And would you please just uh, introduce to our audience out there um, about where do you grow up and uh, how does God call you into the ministry? Well, first of all, uh, Pastor, I want to thank you for uh, inviting me. I'm very honored to be here tonight and um, thank you so much and I appreciate it's an that. Honor. Yeah. It's, it's always good to to uh, be free to be able to minister the word of God wherever you go. So, well, it, it's I'm gonna try to make a very long story very short. Uh, so, uh, excuse me. I am originally from the Midwest, and I grew up in the Midwest. And my parents were basically um, Christians, and so I kind of grew up under a Christian. Uh, uh, home and uh, church, but my calling did not come until I was well into my 30s. Mm. And I was married and I had my children, and my um, ministry part of my life didn't develop until after I had pretty much retired from my profession which mm. I was a social worker for uh, the County of Los Angeles. Mm. And so during that period of time in my life, uh, I had backslidden and my desire was to come back to the Lord and to repent and allow him to use me whatever way he desired. What gave you the desire to come back to the Lord and begin to serve him? Well, it was the Holy Spirit. Uh, because what happened was I had an accident, an automobile accident, and it was a very serious automobile accident. And at that time, um, the injuries that I had uh, had, they um, did not permit me to speak. And being a social worker, you know, you have to be able to communicate, you have mm. to be able to speak. My jaw was dislocated as a result of the accident. And so my ability to speak, to chew, swallow, eat, all of that, uh, it was damaged completely. Wow. And so I was off work for about six months due to that the medical treatment that I had to have and all of that. So I had to uh, write everything down that I spoke to people because I couldn't talk and I, I, I couldn't chew. I lost a lot of weight. So I was in a desperate situation. I had excruciating pain in my jaw and we did not realize that my jaw was dislocated until several weeks after the accident mm. because we couldn't figure out why I wasn't able to speak. But yeah. I had all this excruciating pain. Well, to make a very, very long story short, uh, I had to go back uh, into treatment and that was full-time treatment for over a period of three to five years. Wow. And so... That's when, a long period. Yes, yes. And so I was off of my job and during that period of time, that's when I began to seek God again and ask the Lord to bring me back to him. Mm. And so I was so desperate because of the excruciating pain that I had experienced and nothing was helping the pain. Nothing was alleviating any of the suffering in my jaw, in my head. Uh, I had encephalitis. Uh, my, 
brain had swollen. I couldn't hardly breathe. One side of my nostril was completely closed. I had to sleep sitting up because when I would lay down, I would have so much pain. Um, I finally was able to walk again. Uh, my spine was twisted, and I looked like a person who had a severe stroke. And uh, when my speech started coming back and I was able to talk and I had to see a specialist for my jaw and the debular joint. So over the course of the many years, but I returned back to work after almost about six months, but I had constant pain again. And so in that process of going in and out, finally got to the point where I said, Lord, I'm ready to come up higher in you. And when I said that to the Lord, about two months following that, God sent me to this church all by the leading of the Holy Spirit. I had no idea where I was going, what church. And so I get on the freeway, the Holy Spirit direct me to the church. Wow. And I listened to what he said because I had made him a promise. I said, from now on, whatever you tell me to do, Lord, I'm going to do it immediately. I'm not going to hesitate. I'm not going to question you. I'm just going to obey. Amen. And so he reminded me of that, that day on the freeway, and he directed me to the new church that I was supposed to go to. My first three months of that in that new church, the Lord did not allow anyone to talk to me. That's strange. Yes. And God does very mysterious things sometimes. And we don't know the reasons why, but we just need to follow him. So this is what happened. And not only that, but I, he wouldn't allow me to talk to anyone, and he wouldn't allow anyone to talk to me. So my relationship with him became stronger and stronger. Because when I would go to church, he was the only person that I could talk to. Amen. And so every every sermon that the pastor preached, the bishop preached, it 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 God made it where it was exactly just for me. It was like he saw into my life and he's a prophet of God and he just knew everything that I was going through. And that that is the preparation so, for the coming ministry. Yes. And the fact that today you are here and you have been in ministry, you have been, she have been traveling so many countries of the world and yes. got promoted her from one ministry to another ministry. And later she will share about the men, mighty men, women of God that she have been uh, working with and serving together, together with. And then after that, uh, if I uh, remember cor correctly, that you begin with the uh, prayer ministry. Yes. So would you yes. please talk a little bit about when God called you and Into you have that ministry. vision and passion for that? So, hey, yeah, so, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> so would you just share about that one? Yes. Okay. So this is what happened. Um, how I got into the prayer ministry was at this church that the Holy Spirit sent me to, and for three to four months, this kept happening. And I said, Lord, why do I cry every time through the whole message? Mm. And the message was very personal. It was like, like he was only talking only to me, you know, in the, in the, in the audience, in the congregation. And so finally, there was a, uh, uh, announcement that was made and said we need people to work in the prayer center you know uh, we need volunteers to volunteer so into the prayer center. So what is that ministry that you mentioned about? It was called the, it was the Church of the Harvest Ministry mm -hmm. and it was in Los Angeles and so when I started going there and that's when God called me to that he says I want you to go outside as soon as the service is over and sign up for the prayer ministry and I said, no, Lord, I can't do that. I don't even know how to pray. I said, how am I going to pray for other people? I don't know how to pray for myself or other people. You see, many of us have the same the same kind of thought. Many times that yes. when God called that in to ministry. And we pray that through her sharing that you and I will begin to have the confidence and begin to just trust God and just obey God, whether it is in the prayer ministry, reception ministry, or children ministry, or prison ministry, and just respond to the call of God. And yes. How? And so my hands were shaking. 
I was just writing out my tithes and my offering at the time when the Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me. So after the service, I obeyed. I went outside and I signed up. I was the very first person to sign up. The lady got so excited. That was the first time I was able to talk to anybody in the whole church. Yeah. And so she goes, oh, you're the number one person that's supposed to sign up. And I'm thinking, okay, Lord, what is she talking about? Yeah, let us be the number one. Yes. When God called us, amen. <laughs> right, the number one. Yeah. So that was the beginning of me he said i want you to go to that meeting that's going to be held on saturday i want you to get there exactly at nine o'clock and i said lord but i don't know how to do this i don't know how to pray he said that's why i calls you to it mm. so we know it's god when he calls you to something that he know you cannot do without his help it's always him yes. when that is the case it doesn't matter what your gifts are your talents your abilities he don't want you to rely on yourself. He wants you to rely on him. Amen. And without him, we can do nothing. So he knew I had to totally rely on him, Pastor, in order to do what this assignment was that he called me to. So you do the intercessory, and you receive call from people and prayer. And yes. would you please just share some of the... Um, some of the miracles that you have seen in your ministry through the prayer ministry. Oh, wow. You, oh, it's amazing. First of all, those five years that I worked in the prayer center mm -hmm. at the church, and so God said, now I need you to tell the elder that you're going to go on sabbatical. I said, what? He says, yes, you're going on sabbatical. I said, okay, but why am I going on sabbatical? He said, that's none of your business. <laughs> and so I said, okay, Lord, I'm going on sabbatical. So I called them, and actually I went in person because I, by this time I was the coordinator of the prayer center. Mm -hmm. And so I just knew I was just going to be doing that for the rest of my life. I love that. You know, I was kind of like hidden in the closet. I would open and close the prayer center. I would pray over the prayer ministers, um, you know, and so I was one of the uh, main leaders of the prayer uh, center for that ministry. And we would get calls all over, from all over the country, all over the world, different nations. Mm -hmm. And so I started seeing God doing miracles in the lives of the people that he would have me pray for right there in the prayer center. Mm -hmm. And so one of the amazing miracles, this is the first time I raised someone from the dead. So God used my mouth because I had learned my prayer language. Is that uh, uh, during your sabbatical year, you begin to travel to other country and begin to pray? Or no, no the here? sabbatical started yeah. after that. Yeah. So um, my experience in the prayer center, and when over the phone, a woman calls in, the Holy Spirit tells me that he directed the call immediately to me. And that every call I had ever gotten in the prayer center over a period of five years, the Lord said, I am the one that sent those calls to you. And so he gave me the boldness. And he and so what happened was I spoke to her sister. Her sister called for her, and she was in a hospital room, and the doctors had already pronounced her dead. And she said, Well, Give me one more chance. I'm going to call this person or this ministry mm. for them to pray for my sister and for her to wake up out of unconsciousness. We kind of stayed already declared her that and her whole family was there. So I get the call. I answered the call and uh, I asked her sister to tell me what's going on. She said, my, my sister's in a diabetic coma. She is, they have uh, declared her dead already. And immediately I began to pray in tongues. Mm. And when I did that, God gave me the interpretation of what I prayed. Yes. So I gave her the interpretation, and this is what it was. The Lord said that this is not unto death. You will live and not die. Mm. And I'm totally healing you of this diabetes. And so I told her that. I gave her the interpretation. 
what the Lord had said to me. And so uh, I pleaded the blood of Jesus and I commanded her to open her eyes to let them know that she was alive and that she was not dead because you can hear the everything that I'm saying to you. Mm. Jesus is standing over you right now. He's totally healing you. And I said, you will call me back in exactly seven days. And so here I was prophesying. Here I was ministering to her I, uh, by the leading of the Holy Spirit. And so basically, that's how my ministry started. She came out of the coma. She could not talk, but she, she opened her eyes like I had commanded her to do in the name of Jesus. So the power of Jesus, the power of the Holy Ghost raised her right there. And I said, in three days, you will be leaving the hospital and you will give this testimony to the doctors and they will get saved. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and she it, called and me back exactly that. in seven, seven days, days and she was totally healed. She no more, had no more diabetes and she talked to me on the phone. Praise the Lord. And that's a awesome. And I'm, that was the beginning. I'm looking forward yes. to see that sister to come here and sit together with you and begin to tell oh, wow. one of our viewers about that wonderful miracles. Yes. And uh, for our brothers and sisters and our friends who are watching and worshiping together with us over there, that just keep on believing in the Lord. Our God is still doing the miracles. And yes. just keeping trusting and praying together and maybe some of you else there you're also praying and desperately you're also praying for greatest miracles of your life at this moment and let us pray together in a moment that God is going to deliver God is going to bless you God is going to heal you yes. and God is going to give you the greatest miracles ever you have ever seen and you will experience more of him and then after yeah. that yes yes so after that it, it it was like more and more you know raising people and this was over the phone so that was the first one that i did mm. oh there's been so many because in many of the nations that i've traveled to and preached the word of god that god would open the doors he would have ministers call me at my house on the phone i said lord i said if he said, and so when I went on the sabbatical, uh, this is when he told me this. And I would pray for people to get healed, get delivered, you know, all kinds of prayers. God taught me how to pray different types of prayers for different circumstances. And so he taught me directly. He said, I will teach you everything you need to know about how to pray. And he did that. And so as time went on, and I became more and more involved in that and so finally when that day came when he said tell the elder you're going on sabbatical he said now is the time so i said okay lord as soon as i obeyed and did that that's when god took me to the next level the next, the level. next stage of my ministry and then you become an, a traveling evangelist after that yes i became a traveling evangelist but amazing it was a miracle even how all of that happened hmm. So when I went on the sabbatical and I was still praying, I'm in the prayer closet, I said, oh, Lord, I didn't, I want, I love this. I just want to stay in secret places with you, you know, in prayer and interceding and helping people that way. And he said, I have called you to want something else. And I said, what? Mm -hmm. I said, well, what was all of that? Because I was there five years. Mm -hmm. He said, that was only your training. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what? Oh, no. He says, I will tell you when to leave this ministry because that was only your training. And I said, well, what am I going to do when I leave? He said, I have called you to start a Bible study. I wow. said, what? I said, no, Lord, I don't want a church. I don't want to be no preacher. No, I don't want to do that. He said, what did you tell me several years ago? that whatever I asked you to do, you said you would do it. Amen. So we have to be very careful with our prayer. Yes. Yeah, so you know, whatever we say. <laughs> you know, there's sometimes that we said, Lord, just, uh, just, uh, just, um, uh, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. <laughs> and then when the Lord said, just forgive your neighbor. And then you said, Lord, that's impossible that I'm going to forgive. You see, sometimes that we want, we pray, Lord, I want to be like you. 
And are you are we serious to pray uh, pray like that? Or sometimes we said that Lord send me to the nation, watch out with what our prayer. Yes. And when God begin to call you Amen. and begin to send you, ah yes. But uh, somehow it's also very challenging, but it's also exciting because we yes. begin to be directed yes. by the Lord Amen. rather than by our own self. Amen. Yes, and, and that's that how the journey continues. Okay, so this is how this came about. So I said what. He says, I want you to start a Bible study. I said, now there you go telling me to do something you know I can't do. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. Where would I have it? Where will the people come from? You know, so God wanted me to trust him every step of the way, everything. And so all of this time, my husband is like freaking out because he's like, look, you're already up 3 a.m. in the morning praying, making all this noise in the house. And now you're going to do something else? Now, what is this, this time? You know, he was just really upset with the whole thing. I said, look, I'm sorry, honey. I said, but I got to obey God. Amen. <laughs> and so I said, okay, Lord. I said, if you, if this is you really telling me this, I said, you need to give me a witness. Somebody somewhere who don't know me, never heard of me, never seen me, don't know where I came from, to tell me what you're telling me now. That you need I am confirmation. Yes. And so I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, you need to give me this confirmation. I can't do nothing without you, but I want to be absolutely sure this is what you want me to do. And so the Lord was quiet. You know how he gives you that silent act. And I said, okay, I know what that means. <laughs> I just better be quiet and just wait because I'm afraid if I say something, he's going to do it. <laughs> so whenever you ask God for something, you better be sure that that's what you really want because God will do it. Amen. So I asked him for a witness. I asked him for someone who don't know me, never heard of me, don't know where I came from to confirm that he told me to start a Bible study. So... This is what happened, Pastor. This is another miracle story. I, one evening, about two or three days later, after I asked the Lord to do that, I get a call, and I answer the phone. And so the person says, may I speak to Pastor Brooke Crawford? I'm like, Pastor Brooke Crawford? I said, no, I'm sorry, but you have the wrong number. Because I'm not a pastor. I didn't have a church, no ministry, nothing. All I had done was just stepped out of the prayer center, went on sabbatical. You know, I'm still going to the same church, but I went on sabbatical. I go on sabbatical. And so this man calls me and he goes, no, uh, well, I said, well, I'm sorry, you have the wrong phone number. And so he said, well, I said, there's no Pastor Brooke Crawford here. And he said, well, then may I speak to Brooke Crawford? <laughs> and I said, yes, this is she. <laughs> and I noticed he had an accent. So I'm like, oh, wow, Lord, where is he calling from? He said, the Lord told me to tell you. Now, I never got the man's name. 